All right, it's 12.40 and our reservation is 11 to one, but we're about to get in. The line is, is moving pretty fast. Okay, let me get you a permit for your windshield and you'll be on your way. Just uh, stamped our passport book, but we forgot the passport book in the RV. And so we're using these little pieces of paper to make sure we have this documented and we'll tape it into the passport book. So we made it into Rocky Mountains National Park and that second booth you saw us go through, uh, that's for the Bear Lake uh, access permit that we have. So that's why last night when we were reserving, we were specifically reserving the Bear Lake access. And uh, that's where we're driving to right now. Uh, we're actually not sure what there is. Maybe there's bears, maybe not, but uh, it'll be interesting to see. We found a spot everywhere. It said uh, Beaver, Beaver Lake parking full, Beaver Lake parking full, but there's actually plenty of spots that we saw. So very happy. Uh, let's go check out the lake. I'm wearing my hiking boots for the first time in a while. It feels very weird. Alright, we're officially on the Bear Lake Trail. Probably won't see any bears. <laughs> it's just under a mile long, so it shouldn't be too bad of a hike. Yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> it's too much for us today. I'm gonna check to see how cold this water is. Um, it's cold, but not not that cold. And surprisingly, we're at over 9,500 feet of elevation. So um, I guess in the summer, it's a bit warmer. Jail, it's like in the wilderness. We're almost at the end of this trail around Bear Lake and it's been one of the most like calming and relaxing experiences. We're almost 10,000 feet high in elevation. Temperatures are still really good. I think it's in the mid 70s. What a view. There's little areas along the way where you can like stop and have a seat and really just take in the nature. This is probably uh, one of the few with a really good view of the lake, but plenty of opportunity to just stop and enjoy the nature. Look at this spot. It's literally just wide enough to fit our RV. And then the views from the bedroom would be incredible, uh, but there's just no way to get it here. I mean, obviously it's a trip. So this is a ram, this moose, and then this is the elk. Oh my gosh, look how big it is. Well, that's it for Bear Lake. We're just having a quick snack before we check out the rest of the park. So on the map, I saw that there's a road, um, it's called the Old Fall River Road, and uh, it takes you from the kind of the Beaver Meadows area uh, visitor center to the Alpine Visitor Center. It's only open from uh, early July to September, and we're literally like days away from September. I hope it's not a four by four trail. I hope that we can get through it with the regular car, but we'll see. So the road was open, we're very happy about that. It didn't say any signs about four wheel drive or anything. We're about a mile in already. Got eight more miles to go on this. <laughs> Fingers crossed.
there's kind of this waterfall area. It's so pretty and I'm just happy I saw it. Um, I think it's called Chasm or Chasm Falls. And uh, if you ever make this drive, definitely consider stopping. We made it. We made it. We were going like 15 miles an hour up that, that road. Very cool road. The Fall Creek Road, definitely recommend it. Mm -hmm. uh, you only need two wheel drive. We were, we were fine in our Hyundai. Yeah. Now we're at the visitor center. This area is so pretty. We are at 11,796 feet above sea level right now. We climbed over 2,000 feet on that road. So cold right now. I mean, it was like 80 degrees when we were down at the very bottom um, at the start of the park, and we're now really high up, as Archer mentioned, and it's like 60 degrees. It's so cold. <laughs> We're on our way out of the park and we saw a bunch of cars on the side of the road. So obviously we assumed there's an animal and as we drove by, there's a three or four elk uh, right then and there. There was a baby, uh, a mama, and it looked like a dad too with the antlers. Um, very cool. It, we got so close to them. I don't think I've ever been, like even deer, Yeah. That it was literally less than 10 feet away from me. I don't know if it was dangerous or not <laughs> but I try to keep my distance but wow it was, it was so cool just seeing them up close what a great ending you know to a really amazing day in Rocky Mountains and just like that we're back at the resort we're gonna grab our happy hour drink again uh, get some food and because it's our last night today, we're gonna give you a little tour of the place. This place has so many buildings and amenities. Uh, it's one of the prettiest RV resorts we've been to. There's so much to walk through, so let's get started. The community center is a place to meet and gather with families. They have a bowling alley, they have an arcade. It's also a great place to grab food and drinks. Every day from five to seven, there's complimentary happy hour. The general store is also a great amenity. You can purchase things like laundry detergent, clothing, probably the world's smallest bottle of Tabasco sauce. There's also an event center where you can host large gatherings, things like birthday parties. And right behind it is a pool with a super tiny kind of bar where you can get frozen cocktails or beer and wine. And next to the event center is the fitness center, which has some really great equipment. Also, they have games such as putt-putt and bocce. There's also two laundry facilities on site. One is next to the covered wagon area, and then the other is actually next to all of the RV sites. And what we really love about it is it doesn't feel like a laundromat. These are top of the line, washers and dryers to make sure your laundry gets clean. This is a bike friendly community where you can rent bikes or golf carts. And don't worry if you're not traveling in an RV, although this is listed as an RV resort, there's so many options for stay, such as covered wagons. Um, that's right, actual covered wagons and airstreams that you can stay in, tiny homes and container homes that you can enjoy. It's really just a beautiful community overall. And if you're looking to escape into the mountains in Colorado, 
River Run Resort in Granby is the place for you. Since this is our last night, we're just gonna take it slow and just relax and enjoy the last sunset here. Today we are leaving the resort and are heading to Grand Junction. But on the way there, we're gonna stop in Breckenridge because we weren't able to visit the city uh, when we were... First, we're gonna fill up some propane uh, to be ready for the cold nights in Colorado. Can you move up a little? We got a four and a half hour drive total today, so it shouldn't be too bad. And we're gonna be driving along 70, which it's gonna be really incredible views. And I'm actually kind of scared a bit because the hills are gonna be very big. I'm definitely gonna have to be using lower gears. driving to Breckenridge right now, but I am so sad about leaving River Run Resort. Honestly, it was the best day that we've had so far in the RV. There's still some pretty cool stays that we have coming up. There is a city market here, so maybe we could park there. All right, we made it to Breckenridge. Uh, it was a very beautiful drive. We're just gonna take the other car uh, into the city. Uh, that's one of the advantages of having a second car and not towing it. We don't have to unhook or hook up anything. We just, gonna, I'm just gonna get in and we're gonna go right into the city. We just drove into the main part of the city in Breckenridge. Uh, we're gonna grab some brunch uh, for like an hour that we're here. It has a very lodgy feel and you can see the ski slopes everywhere. Uh, very beautiful place. I read the Denver Scramble. It's got scrambled eggs with ham, peppers, onions, and the hash browns. I got a breakfast burrito. There's a kind of a small and a like larger version. This is actually the small version for five bucks. Yeah, I'm so you can surprised. See that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, and it's it's got kind of the same ingredients. I would say like potatoes, eggs, bacon, sausage, some cheese. But I'm ready to taste it. Wow, that was really good. Uh, in Jail's burrito, there was some sausage and bacon, and I tried those. Their bacon was just perfect. It was very thick. Uh, it's like almost like smoke. But my favorite was the sausage that I tried. It had like a fennel taste to it, and I love it. If you ever come here, uh, try the bacon. Try something with the bacon or the fennel sausage for sure. Well, that's it for us for Breckenridge. We're gonna go back to the RV and uh, head to Grand Junction. We got a three hour drive and uh, we gotta check in to this place we're going to before five, so we don't wanna be late for that. Yeah, I wish we could see more of it, but we'll be back for sure. I thought we'd have to have a very like mountainous drive into here, but it was very close. It's 20 minutes off Highway 70. Now we're ready to drive some real mountains to Grand Junction. The drive over here was just amazing. We went through so many different landscapes and mountains. I just put it in fourth gear and it limited me around 60 miles an hour. So I just didn't even have to use brakes or anything like that. It, was, it felt very safe and comfortable and <laughs> not as scary as I thought it would be. We made it to the winery that we're staying tonight uh, through Harvest Host near Grand Junction. The views here are incredible. We are parked right next to the vineyard and are surrounded by mountains and buttes and I had no idea this part of Colorado was gonna be like a desert. We've driven through here before but I think it was at night so we just didn't really notice. But this area is beautiful and we're gonna go uh, get a tasting. Skin contact rosé, you're gonna get tons of mixed berry, kind of cherry cola notes. Add on Spotify. Let us know what you want to do. Oh, wow, look how small it is. 
All right, so the winery had a bunch of chips and they were international, so I knew I had to check it out. I know when I go to Europe that they have really interesting flavors. And then, yeah, I saw this and he said these are from Spain. Black truffle. I can't wait to try this one. I'm very happy about these chips. Can't wait to try them. Uh, Jayla also got some things. All right, so I got this bottle of wine. It's not filtered as much and I think it's got like a berry flavor to it. This cheesecake in a jar. This is strawberry New York style and I cannot wait to try this. The other thing that I had that is no longer here is the Frosé. I kind of wish we would have grabbed another one. It's a new day and we're leaving the winery. We're on our way to Silverton, Colorado. Uh, it's about a three hour drive from here. Uh, we use this winery kind of as a rest stop because uh, we didn't want to do a six hour drive in one day. But I thought I'd check out the vineyards one last time before we go. It was a very interesting experience staying here, just trying the wine and just surrounded by mountains. There's these nettings on them. And we think it's for bugs. Uh, it just looks kind of cool and at night it looked very creepy. We were not expecting this part of Colorado so it was a very good surprise for us. Yeah.